1981, you swapped the Packer magazines for the Murdoch newspapers, mm -hmm. and then three years later, while you were working on radio, you took a real handbrake turn and you became chair of the National Advisory Committee on AIDS. This is Sydney's 2UE, keeping you in touch. The First Lady of Radio, Ida Budrose. Good afternoon, Mary. No, you don't have to be worried about giving blood at all. As the AIDS I epidemic know. gathers momentum, the Australian blood. government has conscripted media personality Ida Buttrose, recently voted our most admired woman, to head a national advisory committee. The message that must be absorbed is, if you don't know where your partner has slept before he or she sleeps with you, then think about it. Don't. If temptation is too hard to resist, then use the condom. Now, that was a surprising career move. How did that come about? I took a call from the then Health Minister, Neil Blewett, late at night. And I was editor-in-chief of the Daily and Sunday Telegraphs here in Sydney, and it's quite common for politicians to ring an editor late mm. at night. So I'm thinking, he's got a problem, or he wants to tell me some news, or whatever. No, he didn't want any of those things. He wanted me to... He's asking me to chair this new National Advisory Committee on AIDS. And, you know, when the government rings you and, and asks for your help, you don't really hesitate. You know, if you can do something to help, you're going to do it. Well, that's the way I am. So I, I took it on. But it didn't take me long to realise that this was absolutely horrific, really. And there was so much to learn. There was so much fear in mm -hmm. the community. You know, you showed me there on radio. I could have one of the doctors answering questions and he, he could say, no, you don't get AIDS from mosquitoes. No, you don't get AIDS from swimming pools. You know, you won't get AIDS from breast milk. And, and you'd say, right, we'll take talk back now. And the first one would say, Do, can I get AIDS from mosquitoes? You know, because the messages had to be repeated time yeah. and time again to get it across. Are there stories of people that stay with you from that time? Oh, yes, there have lots of stories. There was the, the young guy who was Greek that was at a function and he said he hadn't told his parents because they frowned on homosexuality and he said, no one touches me anymore. And it was so sad. He was just a young chap and he was gorgeous to look at. Mm. But the one that stays in my mind was very early in the piece. He was in a St Vincent's Hospital in the AIDS ward. And he always knew he was different, but he just thought he was different. He didn't really didn't really think about why he felt he was different and he worked on the railways up in the western suburbs of Sydney. And then one day he came to town and he went to Oxford Street in Sydney's gay area mm -hmm. and he discovered the gay bars and he, and he discovered that there were lots of people just, just like, like him and this mm -hmm. was wonderful. He, wasn't, he yeah. wasn't some rare thing. He was like lots of other people. It was such an eye-opener to him and such a happy time. And, of course, he had sex and he probably had lots of sex. Um, and he got AIDS. So when I met him, he was dying and his parents didn't know. And I'm sure he died without them ever knowing. And I've, I've never forgotten that. I've never forgotten meeting him or talking with him. Mm. 